to have the distinguished presence of His Holiness Dalai Lama with us today. We are inducted to His Holiness. I express my gratitude on behalf of all of you to Him for His precious time agreeing to speak to us and dialogue with us. His Holiness the Dalai Lama combines eminence, wisdom, smiles, charm, and offers solutions to humanity. His Holiness is the head of the state and spiritual leader of the Tibetan people. He was awarded Nobel Peace Prize in 1989. In his book, My Spiritual Autobiography, he makes three commitments in his life. Quote, A human being, for promotion of human values and those qualities of spirit that are key elements in a happy life, whether of an individual, a family, or a community. Second, a Buddhist monk, promotion of harmony among different religions, giving a message of love, compassion, tolerance, temperance, and self-discipline. Third, as a Dalai Lama, his commitment to the cause of Tibet he mentioned that the last commitment shall come to an end as soon as mutually satisfying solution is found between Tibetans and Chinese. As for the first two commitments, I'll maintain them till my last breath." Unquote. In my dialogues with students, teachers, brothers and sisters from other countries and my own citizens in India, I have often mentioned that along with his book of the story of my book, the story of my experiences with truth by Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi and Gitanjali, an offering of songs, if any Indian or anyone anywhere in the world reads these books, it is true reflection of the ethos of India and indeed the ancient civilizations. His Holiness does not know disciplines, though he is a spiritual leader. He has held dialogues with heads of different religions and participated in many events promoting inter-religious harmony and understanding. Since the mid-1980s, His Holiness has begun a dialogue with modern scientists, mainly in the fields of psychology, neurobiology, quantum physics, and cosmology. This has led to a historic collaboration between Buddhist monks and world-renowned scientists in trying to help individuals achieve peace of mind and the introduction of modern science in the traditional curriculum of Tibetan monastic institutions re-established. Universality of science is visible in the works of Albert Einstein, Schrodinger, C. V. Raman, and a few others. However, the universality of cosmos, consciousness and compassion is not so visible except in the works and teachings of human beings par excellent and spiritual leader like the Dalai Lama. In his autobiography, compassion emerges as most emphasized human virtue, which is having connectivity to consciousness, to society, and to cosmos. The world is experiencing a range of inequalities and thus sufferings which refuse to be finding solutions in spite of advancements in modern science and technology. Right from the periods of ancient civilizations, such as Mahanjadaro, Greece, Roman, Mesopotamia, the inequalities have been challenged, but these surface again and again in the form of a wide range of inequalities and sufferings. His Holiness, in his spiritual autobiography, shows the ways and the optimism. The visionary leadership of His Holiness and his passion for human well-being also echoes the dream of J.R.D. Tata, who founded Nyas in 1988. J.R.D. envisioned an institute that brings together leadership and interdisciplinary work for greater good of academic deliberations and the public consciousness, culture, education, humanities, social sciences, critical sciences, economics, inequalities, climate change, energy. The life of His Holiness is an inspiration for Nyas, 
to work tirelessly for creating transformations and transcendence for the people in India and across the world. The NIAS Consciousness Studies program brings to its fold of study along with cognitive neuroscience and many other disciplines search for all that which brings about common goodness such as compassion and well-being of human beings. On 9th December 2015, we will be starting an international conference on consciousness, cognition and culture in the 21st century, which will be the largest conference the NIAS has organized and one of the largest the world has seen on this subject. The key questions that will be raised at this conference include those that are pertinent to the life and the works of His Holiness. Thus we are very delighted that He is amid us before the conference to give us guidance for our pursuits during the conference. The key observation and interest His Holiness has shown for understanding fundamental human experiences and for bringing together sciences and the humanities has similarities with the goals and objectives of this institute. NIAS as an institute is not limited by disciplines but is led by imaginative interfaces between disciplines, particularly life, physical sciences and social sciences, art and culture. NIAS wishes to present four unique books based on interdisciplinary studies to His Holiness Dalai Lama. These books are Dialogues Across Disciplines, Brain, Self and Consciousness, Psychological Perspectives on Children in Indian Indigenous Health Systems, Metals and Civilizations. It is with great pride that today we are starting a very distinguished series of lectures at NIAS, lectures by very distinguished people in the world who have transformed human thinking, living, aspirations and resulted in the well-being. I therefore am delighted, honored to invite and request His Holiness the Lai Lama to deliver the first NIAS Distinguished Fellow Lecture, sir. So indeed, I feel great honor you invited me uh, to talk or to share some of my own as an experience. I think except those old people, old brothers, sisters, uh, to younger people, I have, I feel some of my experience may 
get some sort of new sort of say, uh, new ideas. So the, those older people, you already have, I think, same experiences. So it's nothing new to share with you. Right? <laughs> I want to sort of ask myself, what is the purpose of our life? A purpose of humanity in this planet. I do answer for first question. Oh, the very purpose of our life is happy life, joyful life. I think it's reason simple. There is no guarantee about future. But we as we live on hope, no matter how difficult it is, or oh, there will be some or some good things. Uh, with that hope, we keep our life. Once we completely we give up our hope, then that very attitude shorten our life. And then the worst thing. Uh, then I think suicide. So therefore, we can say the very purpose of our life is for joyfulness or happy life. Now the question is, uh, yes, for happy life. Good food, good shelter, in our modern days, good car, and good television, <laughs> and mobile like that. These are we consider the facility to give us because of the happy life, right? And when money, as a matter of fact, some of my friend, I think billionaire, very rich, some American, very rich, but as a person, very unhappy person. So that shows money will not bring joyfulness, happiness. I think sometimes it seems to say, more money, more worry, <laughs> more greed, <laughs> like that. <laughs> so then, uh, I think according, according to my own experience, now you see a uh, number of scientists also now, you see showing interest or agreement, the ultimate source of uh, joyfulness is not material value, external value, <coughs> but within our, within our own sort of the mind, you see the ultimate source of happiness or joyfulness. Now here, uh, even you see the modern scientist, you see the, uh, in the past, See, there is not yet sort of clear sort of understanding the sensory level consciousness and the mental level consciousness. We usually call the English word consciousness or mind. I, I do not know. I am not very sure the exact meaning. But the whole my English like that, you see, without knowing properly. But I use some of these words. <laughs> I think in early 70s, uh, or yes, in 70s, my first visit to Europe, 1973. Then visit America, 1979. Uh, so at that time, one of my translator, one professor, one American, who speak, you see Tibetan, who understand Tibetan. So he helped me translation. So one occasion he uh, told me, your English, the audience, uh, I think, knows only half, not complete. <laughs> My English is very difficult. <laughs> so I'm not very sure. Uh, but, you see, usually I feel, according to the sort of word, mind or consciousness, 
basically you see two categories. One is a sensory level. Uh, that's seeing, hearing, smelling, any kind of taste, uh, touch. So that's a sensory level. So material values provide us some sort of satisfaction on sensory level. Uh, then that, any sort of joyfulness which come from material value is very short. And then more important, sensory level is a very comfortable sort of house and good food and good friends, uh, music, but at the same time, the person still uh, fear or worry, too much stress, too much anxiety. So mental level, you see these uh, are the problems. So the mental level, suffering, pain, cannot subdue by sensory level, joyfulness, right? So, other hand, mental level, you have joyfulness or satisfaction. And then sensory level, even as a solid life, right? Solitude. 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 One time I met one uh, Catholic monk in Barcelona, in Spain. Uh, uh, I was told, you see, he spent five years in the mountain behind Montserrat, so temple, with very little hot meal, just tea and water and bread. So he spent five years such with, I mean, through such sort of solitude life. Uh, he came to see me. Uh, as I have one joke. You see, his English, I think, worse than my English. <laughs> mm? So I have more courage to, uh, to speak my broken English with him. <laughs> so, so then, uh, I sort of, sort of, sort of just chat, right, talk, conversation. And I asked him, I was told, you spent five years in the mountain with a solitude life and very little sort of, because of the facilities like that. I asked, what kind of your practice or meditation during those years? And his answer, uh, meditate on love. When he mentioned that, I noticed in his eye some special significance. So that shows, you see, mental level, joyfulness, happiness, satisfaction, then physical level, difficulties, easily, because of the because of the subdue, overcome, like that. So therefore, this shows mental level experience is more uh, sort of the powerful or more important than also the sensory level experience. So therefore, the material life, material sort of also the values, provide only physical level comfort. So we should not sort of content on that level. We have to find ways and means to bring deeper level of consciousness, that is mental consciousness, uh, bring some uh, inner joyfulness. So that also is very much related with inner strength, self-confidence. So, usually, besides sort of anger, hatred, jealousy, uh, this obviously, you see, we know, this is something negative attitude towards other. But beside that, 
even if it's too much stress, worry, anxiety, related with too much self-centered attitude. Always think me, 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 me. Then, even in reality, no problem. But because of that kind of too much self-centered attitude, you see, a lot of mental projection. That brings anxiety and stress. So therefore, the warm-heartedness, or another word, compassion, uh, is the real sort of, how should say, because of that, uh, source of, uh, or the inner strength. Through that way, you see, joyfulness or inner, inner peace come. So now when we talk about compassion or forgiveness, usually you see people consider these are religious matter. So those people who have not much interest about religion, these also not much relevant. That is a wrong view. Whether accept religion or not, that's up to individual. But even non-believers also is a one happy life as a human being. So uh, you see, the the concept of warm-heartedness is something universal value. So now here, education, temple, church. Uh, good door, uh, I think, provide, provide us. Because I think it's just because of thought, thought. Prashat. Prashat. Very tasteful. Uh, particularly when you feel hungry. Oh, then uh, uh, pilgrimage, good door. Uh, I have to sort of, because of that, confess. Uh, confess. When I, uh, since 79, no, 74. I practice, uh, I start to practice a pilgrimage wherever sort of facility there, uh, each sort of the kind of spiritual places. So then sometimes uh, uh, at the beginning, you see church and mosque or some, uh, some, uh, some other sort of uh, spiritual uh, place. Then uh, uh, afterward, you see Gurdwara. And sometimes I feel a oh, pilgrimage to Gurdwara and hearing, you see, they are reciting their sort of the scripture. Oh, very blessed, but my mind more concerned about the prashad. <laughs> <laughs> prashad really, beside the blessing, are really very, very tasteful. <laughs> so like that. So, uh, all, so, you see, the teaching, wonderful, all major world tradition carry same message, same potential to bring inner peace through practice of love, forgiveness, tolerance, uh, contentment, so on, self-discipline. But uh, reality, it cannot cover. Seven billion human beings. Out of seven billion, over one billion non believer. Among the believer also, there are different sort of traditions. So, one tradition is you cannot, so they cannot cover six billion believers. And then, of course, non believer. So, now only hope is education. Through education, we are not talking about next life, or heaven, or hell, or for Buddhist nirvana. Not talking that. That's the individual business. The business for society. Uh, education has very important sort of responsibility to build healthier, healthy-minded human beings through education, through awareness. Uh, now, on the basis of scientific finding, not relying on quotation 
of some spiritual leaders. Uh, for my own practice in a certain field, uh, scientific sort of finding, their explanation, sometimes very, very helpful to my own practice. So therefore, you see, uh, we already have you see, clear sort of evidence uh, through scientific sort of the research. They already sort of concluded for a healthy body, healthy family, it is very important, healthy mind. Healthy mind means calm, not agitated mind, not too much stress. So we have plenty of reasons through scientific sort of finding and also our common experience and common sense. You see, we can teach our younger generation. Everybody wants a happy life. So therefore, the ultimate sort of source of happiness is mental level, not sensory level. These, I think, uh, in a way, Buddhist psychology. So I often, you see, expressing the ancient Indian psychology, highly developed, but modern Indian, a little bit neglected about these things. <laughs> so actually, the ancient Indian psychology, highly developed. So compare modern psychology, modern psychology looks like kindergarten level. <laughs> the ancient Indian psychology, highly developed. So fortunate or unfortunate, the, the ultimate or the real source of this knowledge from India, but our Indian uh, gurus, uh, not much pay attention about these things. So we, as a chela, now over a thousand years, we kept intact this knowledge. So, a <laughs> uh, 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 sort of, uh, long-time friend, the French sort of scientist, he knows. You see, we, uh, we Tibetan Buddhist scholars, you see, when we sit together, with the modern scientists. So there are plenty of things to discuss, to share each other, like that. So therefore, anyway, as a Tibetan, it's fortunate. We kept your knowledge. Uh, anyway, unfortunate is the real source of this knowledge, our Indian guru, now neglected. Only some rituals some prayer. <laughs> so, uh, so now that, uh, I publicly, quite often, you see, mentioning existing modern education system, very much oriented about material value, as I mentioned before. Uh, so, not much pay attention about our deeper human psychology, or system of our mind or emotion, according to Indian psychology, or knowledge or science of mind, not sufficient to pay attention. Now, these, I think, should include in modern education or the field. So actually, we are working, you see, uh, with full cooperation with some American scientists and educationists now, in Delhi, some uh, in, uh, Indian universities also now showing uh, some interest in these things. So we're already working, making draft curriculum about secular ethics, which can fit in secular education field, like that. So this institution, I hope more research on this work I think very, very helpful, very useful. Then, in terms of happy world, also you see now related to these things. Everybody, every continent, people, generally you see people, really uh, express need, peace.
I think in, in early part of the 20th century, is when nation declare war. I think every citizen of that nation, without question, proudly join war effort. Now that completely changed. One nation, one nation, when you see declare some war, some violence, and then I think many citizens of that country now express rejection. I think since Vietnam War, uh, and then many also the uh, violence take place. Now, for example, I think Iraq War started. I think millions of people express uh, anti-war, anti-violence. So these, I think, sign the people now more and more sort of, sort of the enthusiasm. We want peace. It is quite logical. Once war starts, the suffering, sufferer, those poor people, the people who create war, they some way, some, somehow, you see, they survived, not much suffer. And then people on the street, poor people, old people, women, young children, they suffer most. Sometimes I jokingly express, now modern technology, modern scientists, I think should produce one bullet. You see, uh, I think heat seeking something, isn't it? Usually you see, we already have, my way, seeking car, laser. No? So similarly, you see the bullet, you see goes, the person who actually created this problem, <laughs> go hit, then I think wonderful, <laughs> not hitting on innocent people, isn't it? <laughs> so that I think difficult. So the missions, weapons, no consciousness, no ability distinction, who are really troublemaker and innocent. So then people suffer a lot. Now the Syrian sort of situation, Iraq, Iran, this area. So many of these refugees, young children and mother and old people, really very sad, very sad. So, in order to uh, create a peaceful world, weapon will not bring peace. Uh, money also, economy also not necessarily bring peace. Since you see problem, violence start from here. Anger, hatred, suspicion, distrust. So that brings Violence. So we have to tackle the ultimate source of violence. That's warm hardness. So therefore, the education, I think, should pay more attention about ultimate source of inner peace, individual level as well as because of the humanity level. When we talk humanity, combination of individual. So firstly, individual, you see, should create inner peace. Then, with one person, share with 10 people, your friend. Then 100 people, then 1,000, then 1,000, 100,000. Through that way, change of humanity's way of life, way of thinking. So, the education is key factor to change our world, bring happy world. So I usually use to describe the Two generations, generation of now quite quite warm. Two hmm. uh, generation of 20th century and the generation of 21st century. So generation of 20th century, that's my my generation. So among the audience, 
I think quite a number. <laughs> we are same sort of category, <laughs> the generation of 20th century. Uh, so our century already gone. Uh, whether happy century or uh, sort of because uh, of the uh, miserable century already gone. Now nobody can change that. Now to the first century. Uh, I said, 15 years passed, the remaining years yet to come. So, future, always possible to change. So, the generation of the 21st century, you have opportunity to make a better world, and later part of this 21st century, more peaceful, more harmony, more compassionate century, then you will enjoy. When you become old, then... Uh, you get the world, a ah, happy world. Uh, and then you can blame all the mistakes, all the suffering, point to generation of 20th century. They create a lot of problems. <laughs> so you should feel proud. We built new century, happy world. And the generation of 20th century, they really spoil the peaceful world, including Dalai Lama. So that's very good. Thank you. So now I prefer interaction, right? Interaction, questions and the suggestions and the criticism. Very good. See, uh, here as a sort of, so the academic, the academic sort of center. So we trained as a Nalinda sort of uh, student, right? Nalinda, follow up Nalinda institution. So we train logic. When we study logic, a lot of argument. So although I am quite lazy student when I carry study, but however, I have little knowledge here. So I want to show you this knowledge through argument. Okay. And then also is it uh, one monk there, also good scholar, uh, like that. So. Thank you. You should feel completely informed. You should feel we are talking within your own family. So no need formality, uh, no need much of the anxiety. Whatever you feel, you can talk. So okay. how you can create the solitude in the midst of the work? Huh? How you can create the solitude? You are talking about the solitude earlier. How we can create solitude in the midst of the work? Because uh, it is very difficult for us to renounce the w work. Karsa. Yes, I think the obviously major portion of human being uh, spend solitude sort of life or meditation, then I think we will face starvation. <laughs> so the, the, we, we should have, the majority of the people should work, uh, work hard, hmm? productive work, hmm? including children. We, as a monk, is no children. <laughs> if majority of human beings become nuns and monks, then I think the, uh, the I think that's the best way to control or say the population. <laughs> 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 so, but you see, people, who, sort of normal sort of way of life and working in various different kind of work, uh, 
You see, at least, you see, morning, I think one hour, or at least you see half an hour, you see something, some analyze about life, about those points which I mentioned, out of the source of happiness or satisfaction. Think. That's we call meditation. Meditation, not necessarily you sit in like that and close eyes, not that. There are two kinds of meditation. One meditation we call shamatha or samadhi. It's single pointed meditation. That we need certain sort of physical posture way, posture and like that. But another sort of meditation, that's vipassana, analytical meditation. That's many scientists actually the researchers actually sort of practice that sort of Hosede Kasure, analytical meditation. So therefore, we say analyze, not just the external thing, about our internal, uh, about nature of anger, nature of consciousness, nature of mind, and ultimately nature of self. So then you see the two Hosede concept. Atma, concept of Atma and concept of Anatma. <laughs> so, quite interesting to analyze. And, uh, like that, you see. So, at least uh, half an hour or one hour in the morning. And for that, you see, you should go to bed a bit earlier, not midnight, <laughs> till midnight. And then difficult. Oh. So, maybe necessary, sacrifice some of us today, nightclub life. <laughs> oh. So, normal way, sometimes I sort of jokingly is telling people that if you accept Creator, God, then God creates day and night. So, day means study or working, night means rest. Uh, so, modern life, one occasion I was in Berlin. The, the room, the hotel, where they arranged my sort of Kasoda stay. See, about the uh, afternoon, 8 o'clock, 7, 8 o'clock, I now ready to go to sleep. That just, you see, Kasoda. Ah, the, the, the direct sort of opposite, uh, the, the part of the hotel. You see some, I think, hall. You see some light. Uh, Blue, red, and like that. Like that. I, uh, we can see from outside. In the meantime, music, like that. Then about midnight, uh, I wake up, still going on. Then about four o'clock morning, I get up. Usually, I three or three thirty or four. I always get up. So they still carry like that. So then, I think the next daytime, I think they may sleep, I think. So that's, I think, the, we, these people should not follow properly about God's plan, day and night. <laughs> so you, you may need some sacrifice, this is some nightclub life like that. Uh, otherwise, you see, uh, six, seven hours sleep, and then morning, fresh, and think. Then, then when you, when you age, your age reach retirement, uh, then you have plenty of time to think these things. So it is important to familiarize, because of familiarize at young age. Then when you, when you become old, it's a physical weak, but mentally, because of you see, you familiarize these thinking, 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 still remain sharp. So like that. So retirement, sometimes, you see, uh, I found some of my friends, when they are uh, working some position, you see, very smart, after retired. <laughs> <laughs> So, so you see, uh, 
<laughs> I think, I think, you see, I think like you, you see, always to utilize your brain, although you see your hair become very white. <laughs> oh. uh, you see, because of your sort of such work, I think when you reach very old, I think your mind still sharp and good. So, so retirement in any way will come, whether you like it or not. So then, you see, usually you see people because of the kusas kasa, reserve and reserve some money when you retire. Or when you reach retirement. So similarly, I think mental sort of quality, mental energy, also you see it's the same way, sort of preserve through training, through training, through use more sort of intellectual sort of thinking. Then when you are getting old, I think my myself also you see, physically now uh, it's difficult to even to move, sometimes difficult. But mind, except you see, sometimes now one, one indication, to remember about different name. Usually, I am not much pay attention about different name. Hmm? Uh, so, the, my computer here, sometimes you see, not well recorded about <laughs> the name, difficult to remember. But the meaning, certain point, uh, my mind is still very clear. As a result of training, training, thinking, thinking, thinking. Yes? Next question? Hmm. Holiness, I would like to ask you a difficult question. Um, you know, um, I recently were in Paris where there were these terrible attacks and we realized that, that the young people who were uh, doing that where you, they had their mind changed in two months to become very violent. So I was wondering whether there is something we can do in order to revert their mind to go back to a loving and, and peaceful uh, state of mind. Is there something we can do for that? I often now telling, you see, uh, including Richard Devinson, Devinson, well-known scientist, brain specialist, and some other sort of scientist, you see, they carry experiment, you see, what kind of reaction from very, very young, sort of the, kasa, in, uh, infants. infants. Mm. Uh, few month old infants, say three months, four months. Language not yet developed. So to uh, such young infant, you see, sh showing cartoon, one cartoon, two children play together affectionately. Uh, when the infant uh, a few months old, a person, a child, seeing that uh, friendly attitude, response, smile, joyful. And then another cartoon, two children, you see, harming each other with a negative attitude. When seeing that, the young, very, very young infant showing a little bit of distance attitude. So this and then other sort of uh, they are finding through experiment based the conclusion conclusion is basic human nature is more loving kindness. I think one important sort of I think finding is the constant anger, hatred, eating our immune system. Uh, so too much stress also, you see, very harmful for our body. So our very body is very much related with 
positive emotion, constructive emotion. So, conclusion, basic human nature is more compassionate. When I heard that, I really felt this is the real basis of our hope. If basic human nature is negative, then uh, very difficult to create happy humanity. Basic loving kindness nature. So there is real possibility uh, see, to create happier humanity, peaceful humanity. So I think the environment surrounding situation makes differences. So existing or uh, sort of lifestyle is more materialistic lifestyle. Or culture also more materialistic cultural heritage. So this I think long run we have to make sort of effort to change. Culture of non-violence, culture of compassion, through education. I think we can we can create. Then, I think the, the one way, educate people through education. These inner value are important. That uh, that also you see the, the sort of uh, inner value through familiarize, familiar, familiar familiarization then, you see, can change. Uh, so those children, uh, not out of training or awareness, but by nature more sort of compassionate than all the certain change. That's because lack of familiar, familiar, or familiar these things. So uh, once we sort of through awareness, once we develop more conviction about this inner value and then familiarize these things, then will not affect due to, our, due to, due to the uh, circumstances or external sort of, uh, environment. That's my view. And as a professor, you know, you see, uh, Buddhist sort of see the concept, uh, there's some sort of traces or kasoda, kasoda, ka imprints, uh, imprints from previous life like that. That also makes differences. Okay. Then, yes. My uh, prostrations at the lotus feet of His Holiness. And my question is uh, on Holiness's personal life. You were anointed the, the, the Dalai Lama at an oh, age oh yes at an age when you could not decide anything about your life you were very small when you were anointed the dalai lama and uh, probably the responsibility of uh, this uh, uh, the office was so you know, and uh, how you would advise the the current generation where the individuality is you know much more assertive where we think that you know we have to make a choice and we many times even have regret for whatever situation we have in our life so what what is uh, the the advice of the holiness to to the current generation younger generation Yes, mm. uh, I born a very remote uh, village uh, as a normal human being. <laughs> now, almost 81 year old, uh, another normal old human being. We are same. You see, you should not consider or oh, Dalai Lama or oh, holy person or oh, something, something unusual. If that's true, then my experience no relevant to you. 
<laughs> you see, uh, why also was the sort of view when some people you see praising Buddha and some other sort of great sort of spiritual leaders like Nagarjuna, there is something very unusual. Then I feel uh, that's not much helpful. But consider Buddha, even Buddha as a human being, then uh, give me immense sort of inspiration. Same human being, but through training, through practice, become something very unusual person. Like Nagarjuna, you see, when he born, some sort of kasa, what are they? Kasa, Siva. Astrologers. Astrologers, is mentioned, this young boy, who won, or even, so, on only one week life. And then some sort of medication or some other things. Then seven months, <coughs> then seven years, like that. So, very innocent sort of boy. And then through training, through study, through learning, become, oh, also something great, sort of philosopher, or practitioner. So, so we should, uh, I always telling people, I am just another human being. No special things. So therefore, even I have some special things, that's my secret. I do not want to share with you. <laughs> so actually nothing, actually nothing. So therefore, therefore you see, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I heard the value of compassion, or altruism, quite young age, but I have not much interest, not much enthusiasm. But then my age, uh, 17, 18, 19, then things, situation become very complicated, very difficult, a lot of anxiety. So then I feel these practice really uh, useful to keep my mind more calm mind. And then come to India, uh, reach India as a refugee. I further sort of study and also getting some oral transmissions, these uh, sorts of teachings. One example. Uh, 1967, I received one important text, what's it, or a transmission from one, you see, Neki, uh, from because of the Kunu area, great sort of master. Uh, I, I received teaching from him, the Shanta Devas book, Kasa Bodhisattva Jaya Avatara. The original Sanskrit is still available. So that, you see, explain about how to practice tolerance, forgiveness, and how to develop infinite altruism. That immense help for me. So since then, I can say, it's my life change. So therefore, I always try to share according to my own experience. You see, the other people, uh, it's irrespective of the believer or non-believer, as I mentioned earlier, basically human nature, more loving kind of nature. So therefore, this teaching is relevant like that. So I always tell, uh, sharing these things. So, that's my limited experience like that. Now nearly 81 year old, but physical, basically, quite good, very good. The doctors say that this knee's problem, so one of my German specialist, uh, after check, you see he mentioned, now you are not 18 year old person, but 80 year old person. So cannot do much. This is the sort of, sort of natural sort of the process of your body. But still my mind, uh, 
uh, quite clear. So my practice of altruism or karuna failed to, to, to bring healthy knees, but a healthy mind. Okay, <laughs> mind is more important. Even, you see, eventually I may come, I may go here and there on the wheelchair. Okay, but still my mind, so long my mind clear, then I can, I can continuously carry blah, 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 like that. <laughs> Yes, next question. Yes. Namaste. All religions teach very good ethics, but there are so many atrocities created, atrocities also done in the name of religion. How do we explain this dichotomy? Chukasa. Yes. Uh, it appears like that. Actually, those, I think usually we, the follow of different religious traditions, our faith mixed with attachment. So, the too much attachment, your own faith, then your mind biased. Uh, so I cannot just pronounce that uh, that name. Very difficult. So you see, he actually teacher of the late Varela, another Chilean scientist, great scientist. I think you may know. Later part of his life, he lived in Paris. You see, carries some sort of work. I think map of uh, brain or something. Mm -hmm. Great scientist, so his teacher, one of his teachers. Uh, at, at that meeting, uh, that, that great scientist is there, and he mentioned at the conference, at the meeting, uh, he, as a physicist, so he should not develop attachment uh, towards his own scientific field. When I heard that, I immediately felt, I am Buddhist. I should not develop attachment towards Buddhism. Wonderful. Once you develop I mean, faith combined with attachment, then your mental attitude becomes biased. And then here also, I often, you see, mention the concept of one truth, one religion. And you see, for individual practice, practitioner, that's a very important concept of one truth, one religion. But if you really uh, carry uh, the, uh, on community level one truth, one religion, then you see, there are different mental dispositions. Whether you like it or not, there are different institutions there. So the reality, several truths, several religions, there. That's reality. So now, some kind of cause of the uh, Queen Mangira, can do it. Coordinates. Oh, adjustment, yes. Adjustment is in the terms of individual concept of one truth, one religion is relevant. Very helpful to keep your single pointed faith and more enthusiasm to practice. In the terms of community, the concept of several truth, several religion is relevant. It's a reality. So you see those people, uh, firstly, I think, uh, too much sort of believe one truth, one religion. Uh, so want to impose other people also, it's the same truth or same religion. And then, uh, one's own religion, too much attachment. So your mental attitude becomes biased. So you cannot see the value of other tradition. And in the past history, you see, uh, 
the one group of religion, because of the group of one religion, and sometimes, you see, try to eliminate the other believers. It happened. So therefore, you see, the, uh, the problem is pluralism in the religion. That's the reality, and that kind of attitude is a realistic attitude, and we have to accept using that reality. So that also, I think, uh, depend on wider contact. The Indian, so the, so the Indian religious people, you see, usually quite open. From childhood, they already know there are different traditions there. Like that. Uh, in Malaysia also, I found because there are a large number of Buddhist, because there's a large number of Chinese businessmen. So these, most of them, Buddhist. And Indonesia as well. And Malaysia, also some lot, number of Hindus there. So the Malaysian Muslim, they already know there are different traditions. So those are Muslim country, a little bit isolated, lack of contact with other traditions. Then, quite easily, you should develop, say, just as a day, one truth, one religion. And here also, too much attachment. Then, what you call fundamentalist. <coughs> These you see, the people happen. And at the same time, I think uh, a lot of problems, not only today, but also in the past history, I think the, the conflict in the name of religion. I think the main cause is power or economy, not necessarily religious belief. And then people, uh, I think Northern Ireland, Catholics, Protestants, there's some difficult relations, mainly political relations. So I have some few occasions to visit Northern Ireland. I express, now your problem, very much sort of mixed religious faith and Kazakhstan, political. So we should make distinction. The political matter, let government, concern government, which is let them solve. They should not use the name of religion, Catholicism and Protestant, like that. So as a people, on the level of people, you see, uh, should respect the both of religions. So one occasion, as the local uh, as the welcome committee, they arranged my meeting with some victims, right, victims, right, victims of two groups. When I enter uh, that room, uh, before enter, some organizer you see, warned me, oh, there might be some shouting or some negative sort of attitude, might be, uh, they warning me. And then I also a little bit so because of the anxiety. When I enter the room, uh, you see, quite tense. All the victims, the face, quite the angry face. Then we sit down and start some of because of the, my talking, some discussions. Then their face, tense sort of atmosphere, become more warm, warm, warm. And we together have lunch. Then everybody joy, laughing like that. So that's human nature. Certain circumstances and the information and the impression, you see, develop certain attitude. Then they sit together as a human brother sisters. Then talk. Then basic human nature. Then become more kasa. More obvious, like that. So like that, I think we really need more wider contact among different people. So like interfaith sort of service, very useful, very helpful. Nowadays, is it Syria, Iran, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, or this? 
uh, most most of them Muslim countries. So Shia, Sunni, these uh, Muslim community, Muslim faith. I think uh, I really hopeful the Indian Muslims. I think should take some active role to bring more harm, more closer relations with this as uh, Muslim community. And then also, you see, uh, again, now I think His Holiness Pope visited some, Afri some, some African states. And he, I think, uh, uh, made pilgrimage to one mosque. Wonderful. Such work. I think wonderful. Two questions there. Okay. Yes, next question? Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh. With my deepest salut salutations to your holiness. Hmm? Oh, yes. Uh, I wanted to ask uh, one question. You referred to education. Oh, hmm? yes. And in the education, there is one component, even if we take the pluralism, pluralism of the religions, the, all the religions have certain common aspects. Some, something in which all the religions agree. Yes. Yes. Now, even in those values, which are common to all religions, mm. when we try particularly the advanced thinking educational institutions to bring about a commonality of thinking. There is a very great difficulty because uh, they attach it with some non-pluralism religionism. I hope I have put my... That is, even the common values are not accepted in the, uh, let us say, calling it as academic freedom to think. Of course there is academic freedom. But within the, within this, within the framework of the common values of the religions, we can still make some progress on the basis of the values that you have indicated. So we are not questioning. It is absolutely agreed that pluralism of religion is necessary. But we are not talking of religion but we are talking of the common values, which are a, almost, you can say, a, a common LCM of all the religions. So we have difficulty. Uh, this is uh, some of the experience I had while dealing with uh, educational uh, efforts. Thank you very much. For short moment. Now I want to appear as looks like a Muslim. <laughs> Muslim deity. <laughs> Sometimes I, I met some uh, Muslim groups from, I think, different uh, Muslim countries. Uh, many of them lady. So I also used to put my own to as a day as a robe. This looks like looks like the Muslim. <laughs> <laughs> so then everybody laughed now like that. So, you see your question. Actually, all major religious tradition, you see, I think an important part is two aspects. One, uh, religious aspect. One, philosophical aspect. Religious aspect, as you mentioned, all carry same message, message of love, forgiveness, tolerance, like that. Then, second part, philosophy of uh, It seems to me, maybe wrong, you see, people, you see, religious, uh, follow religion, you see, too much emphasis about faith rather than deeper sort of knowledge about different philosophical views. Uh, so then, you see, just faith. You know, for example, theistic religion, this is just faith towards God or Allah or some other God, creators, different name. 
not much pay attention about practice of love, forgiveness, tolerance. Their faith also combined with attachment. I think that, uh, I think something, Madhavacha, Shaja, you see, I think people, including religious leaders, I think should pay more attention about the philosophical part, our essence of the religion, not just faith. Actually, single point of faith, meant for practice of compassion, I feel that. More faith towards Creator, towards God, towards Elohim, that you need more effort, practice of love, compassion. Okay. This is my uh, maybe wrong. I did one occasion in Australia. This is my talk. Some I think local university, uh, the priest, I think, uh, two priests there. So I mentioned at that time, you see, I am talking some Vietnamese Buddhist group. And they invited two uh, Christian sort of priests also is there. So I mentioned that. Uh, see, the, the difference of, I mean, the uh, theist religious, so the single point of faith towards God is method to bring more enthusiasm, <coughs> more sort of determination to practice love, com uh, uh, compassion. So I think actually the concept of God, creator, is very, very powerful, you see, to bring you see, the enthusiasm to follow God, to practice love, kindness, or forgiveness like that. Actually, uh, according to theist religion, God, uh, as a creator, almost like our Father. So our Father, infinite love. So we are son or daughter of that kind of creator. So think more of that, you see, it automatically you see, develop some kind of enthusiasm. Oh, I must follow the, my father's or pattern, like that. And also, you see, some sort of conviction. We also have the seed of infinite love, because our father, infinite love. Uh, so then, I usually, you see, that whenever I participate in the faith or the meeting, I make mean, clear that the philosophical field, there's differences. But then we have to ask, what is the purpose of this different philosophy? Same, so same aim, same goal, to strengthening the, also the, the conviction about the value of compassion. Like church religion, as I mentioned earlier. You see, brings sort of, sort of what's the uh, conviction or enthusiasm to practice love because our Father, our Creator, like, like, like that. And then, non theistic uh, law of causality. If you do good for others, you get a benefit. If you create some harm, harm for them, <coughs> other, you get negative consequences. So, that law of causality. Also, it's a very powerful approach, we have approach to bring enthusiasm. I don't, I should not harm other people because, uh, you see, I have to face negative consequences. Uh, you see, try to, or try to help other as much as possible because, you see, I want happy life like that. So, a different approach according to people who have different mental disposition. But same goal, same aim. So that's the place where all business tradition can live together, work together, and mutual respect, <coughs> mutual recognition, and mutual learning. Many of my Christian friends, uh, as we often you see, discuss about the practice of Corona or practice of love, forgiveness, these things. And also single point of meditation. This is
is a common practice. So I sort of, uh, quite often discuss. And one day, uh, uh, my Christian son, I said, because of that, my spiritual brother, because of father, the pain, now he's no longer. So he, one time, on occasion, he asked me about shunyata, emptiness. Then I told him, don't ask this, this is not your business. <laughs> this is Buddhist, Buddhist business. <laughs> I really felt, you see, uh, so discuss about, you see, shunyata. Uh, then, unless you have sort of more deeper, wider sort of understanding, there is sort of danger, nihilism, nothing. So that may harm his sort of simple point of faith towards God. According to that philosophy of the views, Buddha also, you see, relative, no absolute, nothing absolute. So that may harm his sort of simple point of faith. So I told him, don't ask that. That's not your business. <laughs> there was one occasion in Paris, you know, uh, one day, I think, uh, leader, oh, I think Catholic, uh, you see, he met and he tried, uh, he explained, you see, it looks like he tried to, uh, he tried to uh, convince me to create a, uh, and then, of course, I politely listened, but in deep insight, I felt useless. <laughs> Why sort of thoroughly I trained or learned? You see, there's no creator, <laughs> particularly like the Pramana uh, Vartika Kariga, second chapter, a lot of explanation. So, as a student of that sort of chapter, uh, that, that book, it's so difficult to uh, accept creed. <laughs> so, similarly, I always feel. No use, you see, to explain some unique, because of the Buddhist way of thinking, some unique thing. No use. I always say emphasis, it is much better to keep one's own traditional religion, traditional faith. It's more fit, more suitable. Otherwise, you see, change the religious faith. And sometimes, you see, uh, among my some friends also, you see, I notice Eventually, it creates more confusion. So it is much safer, much better, keep one's own faith. Okay. Yes? Om Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Hum. Okay. Why is... Do you know, do you know meaning? Yes. Jewel, uh, jewel in the lotus. And that's what meaning. That's all I know. <laughs> My question is, why is it easy to learn bad habits and very difficult to learn good habits? <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, you see, uh, why particularly? I think affection is part of our uh, our body because we are born from our mother and we survived with uh, mother's affection, parents' affection, particularly mother's affection with the mother's milk. So if our two parents full of anger no possibility of our survival. With full of love, we survived. Seven billion human beings survived because of immense of affection from our mother, from our parents. So I feel that's more nature of a human being, not anger. Anger, you see, as a defense for one's own sort of survival, come. And the certain level, you see, it worked. It's expert. 
the thing which is harmful to you, expert. So in order to carry forceful action and uh, related. But basic nature, more dominant force, our whole life is love, not anger. As I mentioned earlier, I think when we, uh, when we visit hospital, you see, the, no doctor advises us, you should feel, you should have uh, so more angry, because more anger is good for your health. Nobody said that. Calm, calm, relax, relax. Relax means, you see, too much anger. While mentally, too much anger, you never uh, have the sort of uh, meaningful relax. Relax means uh, calm mind. But then relax. So real relax means calm mind, not physical relax. Uh, the comfortable bed or house remain relax. Suppose physically relax, but mentally too much worry, too much stress, too much anger. Never be relaxed. So relax means calm mind. Okay. So anger destroys our calm mind. Too much love. Biased love with attachment sometimes create more anxiety, more worry. But genuine love oh, not that kind. So we have to make distinction. Biological factor, certain biased uh, mixture with attachment, that kind of love, and genuine love, there's a difference. <laughs> genuine love through practice, through training, through reasoning. I think, roughly speaking, we can say certain love, you see, biological factor is biased, usually. Very much mixed with attachment. These are spontaneously caused by biological factor. Then that biological factor that take as a seed, then use reasons or events, pros, cons, pros and cons. Then you say you get you develop more conviction uh, through training, and then you can develop certain level of so that, compassion or love, that's unbiased. So that kind of love can extend towards your enemy. The biological factor of love only towards your friend, not enemy side. Okay. Yes. Yes. Do you think that philosophy of modern science is moving towards the philosophy of ancient traditions. What's that? Modern. Many years ago, uh, perhaps uh, you, I think, uh, or I think, may know the uh, great sort of uh, nuclear physicist, the Raja Ramana. You know, I think. This is Raja Ramana. Hmm? This is Rajanam Oh! Oh, hello! I really admire your late husband, Rajanam. So one occasion in New Delhi, some sort of gathering, and I met Rajanam. He told me, quantum physics in modern world, this is something new concept. But he found some of the writing of Nagarjuna, he found the concept of quantum physics. So he, as an Indian, he felt very proud as an Indian. So this new concept of uh, quantum physics in this country, 2,000 years ago, already developed that concept. <coughs> so recently, in Delhi, Jawaharlal Nehru University, 
You see, we all we already have one sort of conference with scientists, including this French scientist. You see, we discuss the quantum physics and uh, the, the Buddhist world one, I think, uh, one much more what's the complicated to the Buddhist concept, Matemika philosophy. So there are many similarities. I think uh, it seems to me the quantum physicists, you see, they found you see, nothing, objectively, nothing. Uh, investigate. Uh, and they will confuse what else there. This is true. The accordance of the according to the quantum physicist, no existence of this solid thing. But it worked. Then there's sort of dilemma. What is the reality? So this sort of dilemma, I think in Nalanda institution, I think at least I think a few centuries this dilemma there. Then further investigate, further investigate. Then like Nagarjuna uh, and uh, Buddha Bolivar uh, and Chandra Kirti, so they made, I think, a very precise conclusion. Nothing objectively can find. But that does not mean nothingness. But there is something. That's just mere sort of designation. It worked like that. So that's a very subtle level of sort of divination. Things does not exist as appears when you look at me or there is real living Dalai Lama. When I look at you on old professors there, oh, it is true. Not even find some sort of useful usefulness about concept of uh, Atma, then better to uh, keep that view. Oh, I think one year, I think two years ago, here in Bangalore, you see, I, uh, I met on the Swamiji, a wonderful, wonderful Swami. You see, very much so, also, actively helping, providing meals to thousands, few thousand school children. And I had some, uh, some sort of uh, because of that conversation. Uh, and I told him, as far as practice of Shila, uh, Samadhi, uh, Parajya, or Vipassana is concerned, Hindus and Buddhists, same, same practice. Uh, the problem, or uh, the differences, is concept of Atma and Anatma. So I told him, that's our private business. I found Anatma theory is very useful. So I believe that. You found Atma theory is more useful. So you believe that. So it's our private business. So no problem. <laughs> so like that. So you see, uh, the quantum physics, uh, I think, uh, quite similar. Not completely the same, but there are similarities like that. And then also, also you see, one serious Buddhist sort of concept once looked out. You see, say, an observer there, observer there, no longer observer, no observer also not there. So, simultaneously. So, simultaneously. So, that also is one Buddhist scroll out. Uh, Chitta Mantra, mind only school of thought. You see, uh, I'll say because of the explain that. So, nothing, external things, does not exist externally, only mental projection, mental projection, mental, mental reflection, like that. Okay. Now one lady there.
Now you are generation of 21st century. <laughs> yes, good. So you know, my question is, question is regarding compassion and forgiveness. Uh, when a particular individual practices forgiveness and compassion, even countries for that matter, in the long run they are taken advantage of and they are... They are taken advantage of and uh, they are not taken seriously and uh, in the long run, how does one deal with that? Hmm? We have to make distinction. The person who created trouble for you, the person uh, and his Action, person as an actor and his sort of uh, harmfulness, harmful attitude towards you is his action, his or her action. So actor and action, you have to make a distinction. For example, when we confess, at that moment we make distinction. I now realize that's a mistake, so I would like to confess. So, at that moment, you make distinction between wrong doing and yourself. So, similarly, uh, towards your troublemaker who take advantage on you. As far as they are actually concerned, sometimes we need countermeasure to stop their wrong doing. Without Losing anger, and still keep compassionate attitude. So this is very possible. Out of sense of concern, their well-being make effort to stop their wrong dream for long run their own sort of benefit. If let their wrong dream let continuously, they create more problem. Eventually, they have to face consequences. So, out of sense of concern, of their well being, take countermeasure, including, you see, so they bring to as a, as a court like that. So, it is quite easy to make a distinction like that. So, sometimes, you see, we, uh, we sort of misunderstand forgiveness, tolerance, you accept whatever they done. That's wrong. Okay. So here we have to make distinction. Anger. Anger sometimes is bring swift of action. So but anger, you see, positive anger, negative anger, you see, you have to judge the related other emotions. Out of sense of concern of corona and some uh, in order to bring swift action, some anger. That anger is positive. That really ill feeling, out of ill feeling, anger comes. That's negative. So therefore, it is quite sort of important. We have to study the, uh, I say the science of emotion, kasa science, science of emoga. Or first thing is the kasa, the wisdom. That's my science. As a sort, we already, you say, have a sort of also a serious sort of study about the science of matters. Now, similarly, we need science of mind is equally very important. So, as I mentioned earlier, ancient Indians of knowledge about mind quite detailed, quite deep. So, this I think you we already now forget that it. So, uh, in order to make distinction subtle level, we have to know, we, ha we should have more fuller knowledge about system of emotion. And sometimes I call it map of emotion. That's important. So, recently, in Delhi, one of the Delhi University, we already discussed, I think two days, two days, three days, two days, I think, uh, you also want speaker. You see, uh, about quantum physics and Buddhist philosophy. And then I suggested that 
Next year, one of the university, uh, hopefully, is organized another meeting about uh, about mind, about emotion. So there, and motor psychologist like that. So eventually, I think like this institution also can organize. Here, one advantage is very near. Uh, big brass institutions in the Karnataka state, at least, you see, major learning centers uh, exist in this state. So very easy. A uh, few hours of time from the Belagubi and Mongolia. So like that. There are, I think, over a thousand, no, over, because of the, almost 10,000 monk students, and many of them good scholar. Uh, up to now, only problem is language problem and not much uh, as a day because of that. Uh, oh, uh, interaction. So now, you see, uh, more and more people who can speak uh, uh, English or Hindi. Because of the because of Malayan, sorry. Karnataka. Karnataka. So now, some younger people, this is more so now, some knowledge, like my broken English, the broken Hindi, or broken Zoroastri, Maratha, Kanada, like that. So, in any way, I think uh, one university, called it in Bangalore, University, last few years, quite close sort of contact with one important college of Saram Sarchi Monastery. Sergei College, like that. So it's quite, quite so, uh, quite useful. So actually, all our knowledge come from India. Ancient Indian tradition, ancient Indian knowledge. The difference is, we, as today, I think through generations, the best brand Tibetan, they. Focusing all their energy, all their because of the mind, concentrated on different philosophical views, these things. So we kept that way. So modern India, many many subjects. <coughs> so you see, anyway, too much westernized. So the uh, negative about these ancient, but your knowledge like that. So. Uh, so, so therefore, you see, I think now I really uh, see, feel more and more, uh, as I say, uh, traditionally our guru, the Indian, now showing more and more interest about thousand year old your own tradition, which we kept intact. So perhaps as the time come. We handed over all your ancient knowledge. We kept over a thousand years. Now time come to share with you. Anyway, quite so strange. Ancient time, 8th century, 9th century, uh, from Nalanda masters, we learned at that time you acting like guru with each other. Now, uh, 21st century, uh, children become guru. <laughs> guru become children. <laughs> like that. It's, I think, our common responsibility to preserve is this knowledge. And this knowledge, not only just ancient knowledge, but very relevant to today's world. World. You see, in some extent, a lot of hatred, a lot of ignorance, want a heavy life, but created a lot of problem ourselves. I often you see expressing, you see, whenever we face some problem, we pray to God or pray to Buddha. If we have opportunity to see Buddha or God, or Jesus Christ, 
I think they may tell us. All these problems, you created. You human being created, not God created. So, it is your responsibility to solve this problem, not God's responsibility. So, God creates peaceful, happy world. And our kindness, our infinite love, God also is give us free will. So, we use wrong way. So, it is our responsibility. So if you say, I am Buddhist, I say, Buddha, if I am bad Buddha, oh, please bring peace, world, uh, peace, bring Buddhist, Buddhist world, and Tibet. Uh, I think we, through generations, pray, 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 pray. But frankly speaking, nothing happened. <laughs> so now, almost you see, Sometimes we feel, you see, oh, now, oh, Buddha, or karma, or truth, doubtful. <laughs> we carry honestly our own life, you see, very simple way, our life, simplicity, and serious sort of practice or study, but fail. So some people, you see, develop some doubt, like that. So therefore, I think, uh, everything, all this problem, you see, we created so logically. Uh, we also have the, also the ability, since we have the ability to create this problem, so naturally, logically, we also have the ability to reduce this problem, eventually eliminate this problem, isn't it? The global warming is out of our control. Isn't it? Do, do you be okay? <laughs> Professor? Be okay? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> yes, another lady. So, firstly, my pronouns to His Holiness. Uh, so, uh, if, I mean, following up on what you have been uh, guiding us uh, all this while in this lecture. Uh, I mean, uh, children, you know, we are following the Western way of education. I have also gone to a Western kind of convent school, uh, learned to earn a living. That's what I have been doing. And the child is also following the same path. We have lost our traditional values to a great extent. So earning a living is fine, but earning a life, living the life, has become very difficult. Uh, what is your message, especially to us and children? What 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 would your be your message, and uh, mm. how can we improve our quality of life as opposed to quality of living in in the modern world in India? Firstly, I think seven billion human beings, we all have sort of uh, same sort of uh, potential in our values as well as our sort of knowledge or sort of that knowledge right? Uh, which have a modern education or technology, these things. So, this, then particularly India, uh, uh, traditionally, you have the practice of Ahimsa, <coughs> a tradition. Then, with that, religious harmony. Now, those creation, those, those knowledge, is your knowledge. Only thing is, pay also more attention in order to revive this knowledge. So then you can combine combination modern technology, uh, material value, with inner value, with sophisticated ancient Indian philosophy, Indian knowledge, you have as an opportunity. You not bring something outside, but simply revive your own traditional value. Traditional knowledge. So, I'm very happy. You see, now more and more uh, uh, Indian students now really showing interest. So, this really, I think, as of the hopeful sign, right sign. So, should, should not sort of expect some kind of miracles. <laughs> Nothing. I don't believe miracles. Some people uh, 
then they have some kind of healing power. I better talk to. <laughs> One time in London, because of Edward Ray, Edward Hall, Roy Edward or something, or uh, one might talk. You see, uh, then this, uh, the, because of that, I have a question, maybe a question or something. You see, I express, I very much know because of the skeptic, skeptical attitude about the healing power. So then I told, if there is real sort of uh, has the healing power there, yeah, then I would like to show, you see, my sort of, lot of itching at that time, a lot of itching. So I want to, to cure that itching through a sort of healing power. I doubt. I, I express that. The next, more, the next day, I received some ointment <laughs> to go. I saw this letter. That's the real power. Not the healing power. But the real medicine. <laughs> so like that. So therefore, this is sometimes we, I think, if I may speak, maybe, I think, maybe sinful, but I feel, you see, they say, Miracle power or something, something. I think it is with us. <laughs> we should be realistic. Uh, we should believe action, not just prayer, just a miracle, something that's not good. So, Buddha stated to us uh, my follower, bhikshus, scholars, should not accept my teaching out of faith, out of devotion, but rather thorough investigation and experiment. So many Narendra masters follow that way. I also try to follow that way. Even Buddha's own word, if it goes against reasons or experience, then we have tried to reject it. discovered that gratitude is the most overwhelming word because I have no words to express my gratitude personally and the gratitude of people, sir. So uh, I am fetching words for the word gratitude. So I can only say salutations to you. You said that uh, some of the words which you say may not have meaning, but I haven't discovered a better meaning for the word meaning by your presence, the sacredness and the holiness which you have shared with this institute. I don't think there has been such a sacred moment in the history of this institute. I can't remember one, but I think... The word which His Holiness said about meaning and uh, using other very transforming ideas such as compassion and argument are so central. So the very word meaning carries meaning when it is surrounded and filled with compassion and argument. We are starting an international conference on consciousness on uh, 9th December, two days from now. And I think this conference is to attain newer heights of meaning guided by, by what you have said. And I'm glad to have Professor Michelle Bitball, Ralph Abraham, Gisepo, and others uh, who are speakers at this conference. Uh, uh, so on behalf of the director of this institute, Dr. Baldev Raj, uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. R.K. Krishnakumar from Tata Trust, the associates of this institute, the faculty, students, and uh, everybody who are friends of this institute, and all of you, we offer our humblest salutations to you. And as I said, we have no words for gratitude, so we can only stay silent for a few moments. Thank you so much. And a small announcement, please. Uh, His Holiness will be leaving in a couple of moments. We request you not to leave the, uh, this auditorium. And uh, please, uh, we will express our respect by allowing him to leave first, and then we leave. Thank you so much for your patience.